Hi guys, Venak here from VST Venak Tech. Welcome back on my channel. Today I'm going to show you two new things that Google released for Google stock applications. The first thing is going to be related with Play Store and with what you see on the screen, which is actually sharing and receiving apps from one phone to another phone and vice versa. And the second one is also going to be very interesting. Please watch the full video to find out what it is. In the meantime, before I start this video, 96% of the people watching this channel are not subscribed. Please help me fix this. I know you know how to do it. Now back on the truck here. So Google updated the version of the Play Store. So right now what we have on both phones here, I have the Pixel 3a running Android 12 and here I have the Samsung S21 Plus. The version of the Play Store is 24.032.210. When you open the Play Store after the update, you probably will not notice anything. Even like me, probably the update happens on the background. But when you go here to My Apps and Games, and I'm just gonna do this on both phones, you're gonna see that next to Library, you have a new menu that is called Share. And this, guys, is actually very interesting. I'm gonna let you know why and explain to you. So Share Apps with Nearby Share. Now you can send and receive apps with anyone nearby using Google Play. No internet connection required. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna switch off my Wi-Fi and also my mobile data in those phones to make sure that we can properly test this. Switching off Wi-Fi, switching off mobile data, switching off mobile data here as well. And right now you can see I am absolutely disconnected because this is really the best way to test it. All right, so I'm just gonna choose here send, right? Share apps with friends on Play. To find devices near you, turn on device location and allow Play Store to access your location. Fine, we can do that one. Press here, continue. I want to allow this as set, so align the location, all right? Now here you have to press receive. Okay, same warning here. I'm gonna also allow here location access. And now this phone is waiting for the sender. Let's choose Facebook. And I choose Facebook intentionally because usually these social apps, they have your personal info, username, passwords. I wanna see how this will go. Pressing here the send button, all right? Let's see, my phone will appear here as the receiver, okay, pressing the receiver here, now waiting for the sender. Let's see if these two phones will manage this. We get here a pairing code, it's the same here, same here, I press the receive button, all right. Oh, okay, 5%, 66 megabytes, and you can see actually the speed is not slow at all. So right now those two phones are transferring information with the nearby share again. No Wi-Fi involved, no, mobile connection, no data connection involved. All right, cool. This goes over Bluetooth, I guess. It's pretty fast actually, right? So once I have here Facebook, I wanna see what happens. So I have the application here. Now, of course, I need to press install. I will install it. And of course, I will not have any login information. So the thing is that you are actually transferring APKs or programs directly from this phone to that phone. Quite a handy feature. This is a very realistic scenario, guys. You are with your friend in the mountain, you're doing some shoots outs, and of course, your friend doesn't have the Snapseed or Lightroom, you can send it to him, perfect. Now I have the Facebook key installed, I open it, and it will prompt me, very nice, it will prompt me now to enter my details. So this definitely confirmed working, guys. A very neat feature found into the latest edition of the Play Store. And with that said, let's draw the Pixel phone and let's see, guys, what else I have for you today. The second update I have for you today is related to YouTube. Let me show you something, guys. You know that the S21 Plus is running a FHD Plus display. And usually, guys, when you play your videos, they're gonna be in 1080p. And also remember, guys, last year during the very first phase of the pandemic, YouTube were putting some limitations on how much you can stream, like what quality you can use on the bandwidth. But take a look now, with the latest release and update of the YouTube app, you can go here and you can choose even beyond your resolution. So right now, I'm able to get 4K streamed on any other device. And in fact, I also did this with the Pixel, but of course the Pixel 3a is not handling this very nice. Now one might think, okay, what are my benefits? And I can show you guys, that's not a joke. Right now, the quality here, you can see 2160p 60HDR. One might think, what is my benefit? And I did some screenshots, guys, that I want to analyze with you. I really have my doubts and concern that you're going to get anything because this is just the simple physics of law. If something is not there, like in this case, I don't have the WKHD display, it's not there. I mean, how can I benefit with streaming on a high resolution as my panel is only 1080p, right? So let me just show you guys, I took two samples that I want to compare with you. So one of these photos is done on 1080p and the other is done on almost 4K. And, you know, just doing like this, guys, 
I don't barely see any difference. Now one might think that the idea behind this is getting really better quality, really streaming with more resolution means that probably the compression is gonna be not so much, so apparently you're gonna get a better stream. I'm not sure. I'm just taking here the comparison between those two photos. I cannot find any major difference. Again, one is 1080p, one is shot at almost like the full resolution that YouTube supports. Again, maybe with some text involved, you might see some benefits. I think, again, the idea is that just getting a better stream means less compression, which pretty much means better visuals. But again, what you see on the screen is really the reality. So can you actually tell the difference apart because to me, it pretty much looks the same. But hey, it's a welcome change. So right now, anybody watching YouTube can watch YouTube on the fullest resolution, even if your display is not supporting that one. If you're able to spot any differences, please let me know, right? Put this down below in the comments. And guys, I really hope that these videos are helpful to you. If that's the case, you know what to do. We also have a Telegram channel. You can join and have a chat with us there. With that said, please, you and your families, guys, stay safe. And we're going to catch up in one of my next videos. VST. Over and bye.